You are welcome to today's video lesson on Chemistry Made Easy with Bright Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be discussing about the pH concept. So the first question we have to ask ourselves, what is the pH concept actually talking about? It must be noted that the pH describes the degree of acidity or alkalinity of a solution. This must be noted. The pH describes the degree of acidity or alkalinity of a solution. This must be noted. And there's a scale that actually is used to measure the degree of acidity or alkalinity of a solution. And that scale is simply called the pH scale. This must be noted. The scale used to measure the degree of acidity or alkalinity of a solution is simply called the pH scale. And this pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Now you can see that I have one arrow moving towards 0 and another arrow moving towards 14. This must be noted. Now, at the center here, we have 7. So when we have a value that ranges from 0 to 6.9 and 7.1 to 14. Now, it must be noted that whenever we have the pH scale to range from 0 to 6.9, we simply say that particular solution in the pH scale is simply acidic. But if the value ranges from 7.1 to 14, we say that particular solution in the pH scale is simply alkalinic or basic. But when we have the pH scale to be 7, we simply say that particular solution is neutral. It's at the neutrality stage. So this must be noted. It must be noted that the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, and from 0 to 6.9 is simply acidic, 7.1 to 14 is alkalinic or basic, and 7 itself is neutral. So all of these must be noted. Now, it must be noted that the concept of pH was brought about by a man called Soren Pedal Loritz. Sorensen. So this was the man that brought about the pH concept in the year 1909. So this man called Soren Pedal or Sorensen brought about the pH concept. Now let us assume two solutions. This is solution A and this is solution B. Now let us say solution A has a pH to be 3. And solution B has its pH to be 5. Now, what is the question? Looking at these two solutions, which of them is more acidic? Now, you can see that the arrow is going towards 0. As you are going towards 0, your acidity will increase. Definitely, pH of 3 will be more acidic than pH of 5. Though this is acidic, but this is more acidic. So solution A here is more acidic. But let us assume that this solution A has a pH of, let's say, 8, and solution B has a pH of 13. Which of these two solutions is more alkalinic? We simply say solution B is more alkalinic because you can see the arrow is going towards 14. So all of these concepts must be noted. Now, let us quickly move over to the quantitative aspect under the pH concept. That is the calculative aspect on the pH concept. Now, moving over to the quantitative aspect on the pH concept, that is the calculations under the pH concept. So make it very, very easy. I will classify these aspects into three parts. Now, the first of them is solving questions on pH of strong solutions, okay? I'll be, I'll be, I'll be classifying them into three parts. Part. The first of solving pH of strong solutions. After this, we simply go over to the aspect that talks about pH of weak solutions. Okay, 
pH of weak solutions. And lastly, we simply go over to pH of buffers. Now, all of these must be noted. You can see I classify this part or this quantitative aspect into three cases or into three parts. The first of them was solving questions under the pH of strong solutions. After that, we simply move over to the part that has to do with the pH of weak solutions. And lastly, pH of buffers. Now, it must be noted that anything that has to do with pH also have to do with pOH. And this must be noted. It must be noted that pH basically has to do with acid. And acid has to do with what we call H+. Plus. And what is H+, plus? hydrogen ion. This symbol here is hydrogen. So it's simply called hydrogen ion. Now, anything happening to acid must happen to base. So here becomes POH. Now, it must be noted that POH has to do with base, and base has to do with the OH-, minus, which is called hydroxide ion. OH is called hydroxide, and there's a minus here, so I call it hydroxide ion. Now, all of this must be noted. So, let us quickly talk about the first aspect that has to do with pH of strong solutions. So, let us quickly move over to the first aspect of this class, which is solving questions on pH of strong solutions. And this strong solution can be of two, strong acids and strong basis okay strong acids and strong bases same applies to this part which is solving ph of weak solutions which is weak acids and weak bases now all of these are what we'll be discussing in this class and after that we simply move over to the ph of buffers now in the course of this class i'll be talking about these two aspects simultaneously whereby i'll be giving us important formulas that must be noted under these two Aspect. Now, what is the formula used to solve pH of basically strong solutions? Now, the formula is simply this, which is pH is equal to negative, which is minus log reading or minus log into brackets H plus, close bracket. Now, this must be noted. Whenever I see H plus standing alone, I simply call it hydrogen ion, as we saw earlier here. Now, you can see that H plus was now inside the bracket. So the name will definitely change. And what will I call it? Hydrogen ion. Now, hold on. It must be noted that in science, whenever we see this symbol bracket, we simply say that definitely the name must end with concentration. So what will I call this? It's simply called hydrogen ion concentration so this must be noted so h plus is actually different from h plus in a bracket and we already know that the s sign for concentration should be in moles per dm cube so all of this must be noted now this is the formula used to solve ph of strong solutions recall we said anything happening to acid must happen to base so what is the formula for solving poh is simply minus log into brackets OH minus, whereby OH itself is called hydroxide ion. So this is what we call OH, hydroxide ion. But if OH is in a bracket, it's simply called hydroxide ion concentration. So let us quickly move over to the other formulas that are very, very important for solving questions on pH of strong solutions. Now, it must be noted that whenever I add pH and pOH together, I must have a value, and that value is 14. So pH plus pOH will give me 14. And multiplication of the hydrogen ion concentration times, or we simply say, a um, multiplication of the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 1 times 10 raised to the power of minus 14. Now you can see that I have deduced just four formulas that are very, very important for solving pH of strong solutions. This must be noted. The first of them is pH is equal to minus log into bracket H plus, whereby I told you guys that H plus is called hydrogen ion, but if H plus is in a bracket, we simply add concentration to the name, 
So it becomes hydrogen ion concentration. And I said, anything happening to acid, which is pH, must happen to base. So pOH becomes minus log into brackets OH minus. That's basically called hydroxide ion concentration. And addition of pH and pOH gives us 14. And multiplication of the hydrogen ion concentration called H plus in a bracket times the OH minus will give us 1 times 10 raised to the power of minus 14. Now you can see all the formulas that is used to solve questions under pH and pOH of strong solutions, either strong acids or strong bases. Now, what are the formulas that are very, very important in this aspect? That is what I'll be showing us right now. That is why I told us in the, in the, in the initial part of this class that both concepts will be discussed simultaneously. Now, before coming over to this aspect and giving you guys the formula that is important under this aspect, we have to be familiar with one concept, with the concept of Ka and Kb. Now, what do we call Ka? Ka is called acid dissociation constant. This must be noted. Ka is called acid dissociation constant. And recall, anything happening to acid must happen to base. So what we call Kb is simply called base dissociation constant. This must be noted. Now, moving further, now what am I trying to say here? It must be noted that as we are having pH, so we are having what we call pKa. This must be noted. As we are having pH, so we have what we call pKa. And in chemistry or in science, or in chemistry to be precise, the symbol P simply means minus log. So what are we having here? pKa, when we want to express it, it becomes minus log Ka. Now, anything happening to acid must happen to base. So, so what are we having here? pKb equals minus log Kb. Okay, this must be noted. pKa minus log Ka, pKb minus log Kb. Now, it must be noted that we'll follow our equation three, which is pKa plus pKb is equal to 14. I just said we are just inter we are just changing all of the symbols because we have to be familiar with this concept right now before moving over to the formula for solving pH of a weak solution, either weak acids or weak bases. So that is for that. And lastly, multiplication of Ka, okay, modus Ka times Kb is going to equal to 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 14. Okay, all of this must be noted. So you can see we just interchange the formula for this to this because this is very, very important for we come to this aspect. So what are the formulas used for solving the pH and pOH of weak solution? The first of the formula here is simply pH of a weak solution is equal to minus log into root of KAC. This must be noted. This dot here means times. And what does C mean? C means concentration. Okay, that is what that C there means. And concentration should be in what unit? Most per dm cube. You know, we have various ways concentration can be expressed. We have expressing concentration in mole per dm cube. That's molarity. Expressing concentration in mole per kg of solvent. That is molarity. And also for normality. Okay, but this is basically expressing concentration in most per dm cube, which is also regarded to be called molarity. So that is for that. So what is the formula for solving pOH? You know, anything happen to acid must happen to base. So pOH formula becomes minus log into root of Kb. We are talking about this pOH, so it becomes Kb. C. So you can see the two formulas that are very, very important when solving questions on the pH and pOH of weak solutions. So with all what I've said, let us start solving practice questions under this aspect first before we move over to this concept, okay? And lastly, we'll go over to solve problems on the pH of buffers. Now, before coming here, this particular concept must be noted. That is why I wrote it here on the board so we can memorize and jot them down. But let us start solving questions on pH of strong solutions. So you can see the first question written on the board. How do you know that this particular question is, is on pH of strong solutions? Now, this particular acid here is very common. 
It is a strong acid called hydrochloric acid. So when I see questions on this aspect, I simply say, oh, it's under pH of strong solutions. And also, they, they did not give us Ka or Kb. So we can't apply the concept of pH of weak solution. This question is very straightforward. And what will be the solution? It is simply easy. They are asking us to get pH. And they gave us the hydrogen ion concentration to be 2.0 times 10 raised to the power of minus 5 moles per dm cube. So what sh formula should I apply? I simply apply the first formula that says pH is equal to minus log into bracket H plus. You know, this H plus value should be imputed here. So what becomes the pH? It becomes minus log into bracket 2.0 times 10 raised to the power of minus 5. You know, I told you it should be expressed in moles per dm cube or molarity. So when we do that, what becomes pH is equal to 4.7. So you can see how questions under this aspect have been solved without stress. So the next question here, you will be solving it and we solve a lot of practice questions. So here is the question you'll be solving and you provide the answer in the comment section below. Meanwhile, let us quickly go over to the next practice question. Now, let us quickly move over to question three, which is calculate the pH of a solution of H2SO4 with H plus as the hydrogen ion concentration of this value. Now, you know, you've seen this compound now, which is H2SO4. Some person might, might be like say, Okay, because H2SO4, I want to times this particular value with 2. No, it doesn't work that way. Why? Because the question is straightforward. Because they've already given us the H plus already. We don't need to times anything. When that particular aspect comes, I will let us know. So look at how this question will be solved. Very straightforward. They're asking us to get pH and they've given us the H plus. That's the hydrogen ion concentration already to be 3.0 times 10 raised to the power of minus 8 moles per dm cube. So what will I do? I simply recall my formula, which is pH is equal to minus log into bracket. Is the H plus or OH minus? It is H plus, not OH minus. If it was OH minus, here becomes POH. So what becomes the formula, the answer rather, because minus log, let's impute, we're having 3.0 times 10 raised to the power of minus 8, close the bracket, so we're having 7.523 as the pH of this particular solution. So you can see how questions under this aspect are being tackled. So let us quickly move over to the next practice question. And this question, we have to listen to it very carefully and look at the words, the way it is asked. So let us quickly go over to question four. Now, let us quickly move over to the next practice question. Now, if we look at this question carefully, the question is asking us to get pH of a 0.002 more per dm cube solution HCl. Now you can see that in this particular, particular question, the configuration of the question changed. Why? You can see that they did not give us the, the concentration of the hydrogen ion, but rather they gave us the concentration of the full compound, which is HCl. That's why they said 0.002 more per dm cube solution HCl. So we cannot just use the normal concept by saying pH is equal to minus log into H plus and infuse this value as H plus. You will not get the answer correctly. Why? Because they did not give us the H plus specifically. So right now we have to know the H plus, determine the H plus. And how do we do this? To do this, we have to know the concept of two terms. First of them is basicity of an acid and the other is acidity of a base. Now, what do we call the basicity of an acid? Now, what's the concept actually talking about? Basicity of an acid. Now, it must be noted that the basicity of an acid is the number of replaceable hydrogen ion that is present in one molecule of an acid. Now, what am I trying to say? Now, let's take an example. This is one acid, which is HCl. Now, I want to dissociate it by breaking HCl. I'm having H plus plus Cl minus. In the look of things, is this reaction balance? Yes, because I'm having one atom of hydrogen. Same applies here, one, okay? One, and same applies here, which is one chlorine atom. Or in, in this context, is an ion. And same applies here, we have one. So in the look of things, at the end of dissociation, how many H plus did I have? I had just one H plus. So I will simply say 
H plus in this context is 1. So this particular compound is monobasic. This must be noted. Now let's go over to another example using another acid which is H2SO4. Because we have to be familiar with this aspect before we solve questions under this concept. So I want to dissociate H2SO4. When I do that, I'm definitely going to have H plus from the, uh, from the definition that says basicity of an acid is the number of replaceable hydrogen ion in one molecule of an acid. This is one molecule of an acid. One molecule of an acid. So plus the radical here, which is SO4 2 minus. Now, the reaction is not balanced, but I think if I put 2 moles of H plus, it will be balanced because I'm having 2 hydrogen here. So H plus in this context was 2. Definitely what becomes the basicity of, of this acid, it becomes dibasic. Now, let's go over to the last example, okay, or the second and last example, H3PO4. Now, let's dissociate this. We are having H plus definitely plus uh, PO4 3 minus is a radical actually called the phosphate radical. So in this context, how many moles of H plus should I add? 3 because here was 3. So what becomes my basicity of this particular acid is becomes 3 and here, here becomes tri-basic. So all of this must be noted. Now let's take the last example using an organic acid. And all organic acids most of the times are weak acids. So this is one example. H3 now, uh, CH3COH, this is called ethanoic acid, okay? This is called ethanoic acid. Now, when we dissociate ethanoic acid, we are having CH3CO minus, and we are now left with just one hydrogen ion. So, in this case, the reaction is balanced because I'm having how many carbon? Two carbon, two carbon, how many hydrogen? Four. How many hydrogen? Four. How many, how many oxygen? Two and two. So in this context, I'm having one H plus. So in this context, uh, 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 um, ethanoic acid has just one hydrogen or one replaceable hydrogen ion. So in this context, will it be tribasic? No. Will it be dibasic? No. But rather it's what? Monobasic. So all of this must be noted about the basicity of an acid because we have to understand this principle proper before we quickly move over to solve questions under this aspect. So all of these concepts explains the basicity of an acid. As I earlier said, as we are having basicity of an acid, so we are having acidity of a base. So right now, if I talk about acidity of base, we'll be talking about all of, we'll be dissociating various bases. Now, it must be noted that the, the basis of this common acid must be noted. Because if you check this question now, the acid here is HCl. We are coming to this question. But before coming to this question, let's quickly talk about acidity of a base. So let us quickly talk about the acidity of some common bases, like the likes of NaOH, which is popularly called sodium hydroxide. So let us dissociate this compound I'm having sodium metal, which is Na+, plus, which is called sodium ion, plus I'm interested with the OH. You know, anything that has to do with base must has to do with the OH minus, called the hydroxide ion concentration. It is not called hydroxyl. Hydroxyl is seen in organic chemistry. So what are we having to be the acidity of this base? You can see here that the reaction is balanced. I'm having one mole of this and one mole of sodium. Same applies here. One sodium and, you know, one OH here. So it tells us that the OH here is simply one. And we say it is monoacidic. Yes, the compound is monoacidic. I'm having just one OH minus. So taking another example like the calcium hydroxide, which is represented to be this as its chemical formula. So let us dissociate. We are having calcium ion, which is Ca2+, plus, plus the OH minus, which is the hydroxide ion. Now in this context, how many OH minus am I having here? Two. So we have to put two here. So OH minus here becomes two. So we are having this particular compound called calcium hydroxide to be di acidic so this compound is diacidic so this must be noted now taking the last example which is seen in aluminum hydroxide okay aluminum hydroxide so let us dissociate it so when we dissociate what are we having al3 plus plus oh minus so we're having three moles here because here was three so it tells us here that this particular compound is triacidic so this must be noted 
This must be noted about base. This is an acid and acidity of a base. So with all what I've said, let us quickly move over to this particular question to solve questions under this aspect. Now, here is the question. The question says, calculate the pH of a 0 0.002 mole per dm cube solution HCl. Recall, this particular question we are seeing is quite different from the ones we've been solving. The ones we've been solving, they gave us a straightforward, they gave us the H+. Plus. Now, here they did not give us H+. Plus. This we are seeing is the concentration of the full compound. So how do we solve questions under this aspect? We simply remember the formula I gave, which is pH is equal, because that's not to get pH, so which is pH is equal to minus log into bracket H plus. And we were not given H plus in the question. Now, but we have an alternative way to get H plus. H plus can be solved by a formula, which is concentration of the acid. That's the concentration of the full cover, which is H here in this context, times basicity. This must be noted. You know, acid have basicity and bases have acidity. So here, what record the, the re, let us record the basicity of this acid. We said initially from the breakdown, from the reaction, we said that this particular acid here is monobasic, so the basicity is one. So what do we do? This H plus, I impute it in place of bracket. The formula for H plus, I impute it here. So we have in pH formula to be minus log into a uh, bracket concentration, I'm shorting concentration, conk, with dot A, uh, concentration of acid times the basicity, which is 1, okay? So let us do this. Let's solve it. So what becomes pH? Minus log in towards the concentration of the full acid, which is this. So 0 0.002 times 1. So what becomes our pH? It becomes minus log into um, 0 0.002. So minus log into... Um, 0 0.002, we have the pH of this particular solution to be 2.7. So you can see how questions like this have been tackled without stress. So let us quickly move over to the next practice question. So let us quickly move over to the next practice question, which is question 5, and it says, calculate the pH of, uh, of a 0.0025 mole per dm cube H2SO4. Now, it's still like the previous question. This I am seeing is not the H plus value, but rather the concentration of the full compound, which is H2SO4. So how do we solve questions under this aspect? We simply remember our formula for solving pH, which is minus log into bracket H plus. But we were not given H plus in the question. And we already know an alternative formula for H plus. So pH here becomes minus log into what's the alternative formula I said initially? It is concentration of acid, concentration of acid times basicity. So how do we solve questions under this aspect? We simply remember all what we've said initially. So it becomes minus log into what's the concentration of the acid in this context is simply 0 0.0025 times. Now, what's the basicity of this acid? Remember, we said it is di-basic. So the, the basicity is 2. So times 2. So what becomes pH? So 0 0.0025 times 2. That is um, minus log into 0 0.005. Five. So, uh, minus log into 0 0.005, we have the pH of this solution to be 2.30. So, that 2.301, as the case may be. So, you can see how questions on this aspect are being solved without stress. So, let us say, for instance, they are asking us to get pOH again. How do we solve it? Remember, in question 3, I gave in the formula that says pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So the access of get pH in this context. So pH become make it subject whereby pH goes and becomes negative. So how do we solve it? So pH will become 14 minus pH. So what becomes pOH becomes 14 minus what's our pH in the question, which is 2.301. Um, so what becomes pOH is equal to uh, 14 minus 2.301. 301 so poh becomes 11.7 so you can see how questions under this aspect are being solved without stress so that is how it is done now let us say the compound they gave to us was a base please get this straight the compound they gave to us was a base let's say here was sodium hydroxide 
N-A-O-H. And definitely, and they are now asking us to get P-O-H, okay? And the compound was not changed to a base, which is sodium hydroxide, okay? So how do we solve questions like this? We simply remember our formula that says, uh, 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 since they're asking us for a base and they actually get P-O-H, we simply just say P-O-H changes to O-H minus, Okay, and also, how do we get OH minus? It must be noted that OH minus has an other alternate formula as H plus. It's simply very, very familiar with this. So it's simply concentration of base times acidity. Remember, base has to do with acidity and acid has to do with what? Basicity. So when we see questions relating to bases, we have to be calm and take the right steps and get the answer without stress. So you can see how questions under this aspect are being solved without stress. So let us quickly move over to the next concept, which is solving pH and pOH of weak solutions. All of the examples we've been solving initially is for pH and pOH of strong solutions. So let's quickly move over to solving pH and pOH of weak solutions. So, here is the first question that explains pH and pOH of a weak solution. First of all, it must be noted that most or all organic acids are weak. This is a good example of an organic acid. So when I see questions like this, I'll say, oh, it is talking about pH and pOH of a weak solution. And definitely they give us Ka, you know, I gave you guys the formula initially. So when, how do we solve questions under this aspect? We simply remember the formula for solving pH of a weak solution, which is pH is equal to minus log into root of KAC. So this is the formula. So let us impute parameters. Now, what is the pH? First of all, minus log into root. What was the Ka value for ethanoic acid? It is 1.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times. Now, what is the concentration given in the question? You know, anything that has to do with mole per dm cube or molar is concentration you know this is basically molarity but if it is small m this is molal and this has to do with molality all of them are all concentration unit but in the concept of ph we're interested with molarity more per dm cube or molar not molal so how do we solve question what's our c which is 0 0.0020 okay so let's Impute them in our calculator and get our answer. So minus log into root of 1.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times 0 0.0020. So we are having the pH to be 3.722. Now, for instance, they're asking us to get pOH. How do we do it? Remember our equation 3 that says pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And uh, what do we do next? We simply make a pOH subject because of 14 minus pH when it comes here, so what are we having here? 14 minus a pH, which is uh, 3.722. So what becomes pH rather? It becomes 14 minus 3.722. So what becomes the answer? 10.2 or 10.3. Okay, so you can see how questions like this are being tackled without stress. So let us quickly move over to another practice question on that solving pH and pOH of weak solutions. So let us quickly move over to the second practice question on that solving pH and pOH of weak solutions. Now, this question says, determine the pKa. We have to be careful here. Determine the pKa for a, they've given us concentration already, that's C, solution of angelic acid. Angelic acid is basically an organic acid and all organic acids are weak. Whose measured pH is 4.0? How do we solve this question? First of all, we must remember the formula. And what is the formula? Is simply pH is equal to minus log into root of KAC. Now, after this, what do we do next? We are looking for pKa. But first of all, I think we have to look for Ka. Yes, it's very, very important because they've given us pH already. The pH value was 4 equal to minus log. This was not given, but they gave us concentration. So let us work mathematically so as to get this answer without stress. So the first of the step here, so the first step here is to basically take log inverse or anti-log. So what becomes the uh, solution to this? We simply say uh, this minus log comes to this direction. So it becomes log inverse, that shift log in your calculator, that's minus log into 
Now your pH changes to negative minus pH and this only remains equals to root of KAC. So what becomes the next step? We simply say log uh, inverse of what's our pH 4, but in this context it's minus 4 into root of KAC. So first of all, let's get the value for log inverse of this. So shift log into minus 4. That is 1 times 10 raised power of minus 4. So bringing this here, we have been 1. Uh, 1 times 10 raised power of minus 4 is equal to uh, root of KAC. So the next step here is to bring the square root here to make, uh, bring the square root here to, to square this value. So we have 1 times 10 by minus 4 all squared is equal to KAC. Okay? So the next step here is to make KA subject because we are looking for PK but we have to make K subject divided by the coefficient of K which is C and C. So it cancels. So KA becomes equals to uh, uh, 1 times 10 minus 4 um, all squared or raised power, what's our, sorry, divided by the C, which is 0 0.005. So what becomes Ka here? We are having um, 1 times 10 to the minus 4, close bracket, all squared over 0 0.005. So we are having Ka here to be 2 times 10 raised to the power of minus um, 6 to be the Ka. And how do we get PK? That's what the question is asking us. So remember the initial part of this class I said, for we to get PKA, remember it's equal to minus log into Ka. You know, I said in chemistry, P means minus log. So we just say minus log into Ka. So what becomes PKA value? Minus log into Ka. So PKA here becomes minus log into 2 times 10 minus 6. So when we hit our calculator here, minus log into 2 times 10 to minus 6, uh, we are having 5.7 to be the value for PKA. So you can see how questions like this have been solved. If they're asking us to get PKB, for example, we simply say PKA plus PKB is equal to 14. You no, know, I gave all of these initial equations initially in this class. So you can see how questions on, uh, on pH and pH of weak solutions are being tackled without stress. Follow the step-by-step -step process, remember the formulas, and you are good to go. So with all what we've said, so let us quickly go over to the last part of this video, pH. So with all what I've said, let us quickly go over to the last part of this video, which is solving. So, so let us quickly move over to the last part of this video, which is solving questions on pH of buffers. Now, first of all, we have to understand what a buffer is. Now, a buffer is a type of solution that can resist change when the pH of that particular solution is altered. Now, what am I trying to say? Let's say we take an, a quantity of acid, a quantity of base added to a buffer solution, the pH of that particular buffer will resist change. It will not change. So that is what we are trying to say here. But most importantly is for us to be able to solve questions, calculative questions under this aspect because buffers, we have two types. We have acidic and also we have basic buffer to be generalistic. So what am I trying to say? You know, we have formula for solving a pH of a buffer. So what's the formula? It's simply pH you know, anything happening to acid must happen to base. So the formula is simply pH is equal to pKa plus log concentration of salt. You know, anything that has to do with brackets must be called concentration over concentration of acid. So this is formula for solving pH of a buffer. So what's the formula for solving pOH? Of a buffer is simply POH is because anything that has to do with POH must have to do with PKB. So here it becomes PKB plus log. Um, you know, we are talking about POH here should be base over salt. Now, what am I trying to say? Let's work with this first of all. Let's say we are having an acid, and also buffers has to do with weak acid and weak bases. So let's talk about this guy. This guy is a weak acid. H2CO3, which is popularly called carbonic acid. Now, how do we get the salt of this weak acid? What do we do? We simply remove the hydrogen here and replace it with sodium, for example. You know, when sodium is attached, we are, we are forming a salt, okay, of this particular acid. And since we're having H2 here, here become Na2. So what are we having? Na2CO3. So this is the salt of this weak acid. So this is the salt of this weak acid forming the pH of a buffer. So taking another 
other examples using uh, um, basic buffers, uh, we can have uh, examples that we explain this. But most importantly, is for us to know how the formula works. So you can see how it is done. So let us start solving practice questions under this aspect. So let us quickly go back to this question and solve it with our stress. First of all, we have to locate the salt and the acid or the salt and the base. You know, for the first formula, it has to do with salt and acid. The other for pH, salt and base. So let us quickly know what we are given. So first of all, this is an acid. Yes, this is an acid, but it's a weak acid. It is a weak acid. You know, buffer has to do with weak acids and weak bases. And also, this is salt of this weak acid. You know, I, I, I told you how to get the, the salt of a weak acid using the reaction of there. Now, this is called sodium ethanoid. Okay. Now, moving further, how do we solve question under this aspect without stress? Now, they are asking us to get buffer. Sorry, pH of a buffer. So let's all remember the formula gave pH of a buffer is equal to pKa plus log concentration of salt over concentration of acid. Now, first of all, what was the parameter given? What was the Ka in the question? It was given to be 1.8 times 25 minus 5. Now you can see that the Ka of this acid is constant. 1.8 times 10 raised to the minus 5. Now moving further, now moving further to the next level, which is the weak acid, CH3COOH. Now what's the concentration of this weak acid? This is the acid, the weak acid to be precise. Uh, what's the concentration? They gave it to be 0 0.003 molar. And also, what was the salt in the question? It was given to the CH3COONA, which is called sodium ethanoate. And what was the concentration? It's basically 0 0.009 molar. So you can see all the, parameter, all the parameters brought out in the question. So pH here becomes, now remember, pKa is simply minus log Ka plus log concentration of salt over concentration of acid. So pH here becomes minus log 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5 plus log. Uh, what's the question of the salt? It was given to be 0 0.009. So 0 0.009 over concentration of the acid to be 0 0.003. So let's impute and solve. So here, I think it's 4.74. Okay, here is 4.74 plus log. Now, when you do this, you're having 3. 0 0.009 over 0 0.003. That's 3. So what are we having log 3 here is equal to 0 0.478. So pH here becomes 4.74 plus 0 0.478. Um, rather. Okay, so what are we to do? 4.74 plus 0 0.48. When we use our calculator, we're having 5.22. So be the pH of this buffer. So you can see how questions under this aspect are being solved without stress. So the next of the question here, you'll be solving it. I prepare the answer in the comment section below. So here is the question you'll be solving. I prepare the answer in the comment section below. So let's quickly go over to the next practice question. So let us quickly go over to this practice question. You know, we have to be careful here. This question is, is very, very smart. So how do we solve questions under this aspect? First of all, they are asking determine pH. But let us leave that. Let us look at the compounds given in this question. Here, I can see that this particular compound is a base. Yes. Ammonium hydroxide, and this is the salt of the base. Now you can see the question. Now I'm seeing base and salt. Which formula will I actually relate? It is POH. Yes, because we are dealing with a base and a salt. You know, if it was acid and a salt, it is pH. So POH becomes uh, 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 PKB plus log uh, uh, um, salt concentration of salt. Okay over concentration of base now we have to be careful here because i can say that in the question they gave me pka but not pkb how do we get pkb remember the equation i gave initially in this video which is pka plus pkb is equal to 14. so how do we get pkb is equal to 14 minus pka okay it's coming here so what are we having pkb we now because of 14 minus what's the pka it is 4.58 okay so i write that 4.58 so what becomes pkb is equal to uh 14 minus 4.58 that is 9.42 so 9.42 becomes the pkb value now also in this particular question 
I was giving volume. Now, this must be noted. Whenever you are giving volume in solving questions on the pH and pOH of a buffer, please and please convert. Con because now they gave me volume alongside with the concentration. You know, recall we said whatever value that should be here should be in the form of concentration. But right now we're giving volume and this volume are not the same. So we simply convert because I am seeing something here. They gave me volume and they gave me concentration. I can convert it to number of moles, which is N. Same applies to this parameter, 0 0.005 uh, molar, and the volume here was 600 milliliters. Now, what am I trying to say? We simply convert both parameters to number of moles. So number of moles of the first or number of moles of the base, we have a formula that relates both of them, which is C times V over 1,000. What is C? Concentration, what is V? Volume over 1,000. Okay, so... And, uh, and because the, the volume was in milliliters, that is why I divided, divided by 1,000. If the volume was in liters, I will not divide by 1,000. If the volume was in dm cube, I will not divide by 1,000. But if the volume was in cm cube, I will divide by 1,000. So what am I trying to say here? Number of moles of the base will not be because what's the concentration of the base? We have to be careful. This is the concentration of the base. And what's the volume? 400 milliliters. So 0 0.0025 times volume, which is 400 over 1,000. What are we having? And uh, let's quickly do that for the salt, which is uh, 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 C times V over 1,000. So number of moles of the salt will not be equal. So what's the condition of the salt? Uh, basically, is the 0 0.005 times what's the volume? 600, okay, over 8,000. So what are we having to be the number of moles of both parameters? Because now we are to use number of moles in place of concentration. I'm coming there. So let's quickly get our value. 0 0.0025 times 400 over 1,000. So we are having here to be 0 0.00. Um, okay. We are having here to be, let's just take it in standard form, 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles. And here, um, 0 0.005 times 600 over 1,000. So we're having here to be 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 moles. So you can see we've gotten both parameters in moles. So my formula simply changed. So POH now because of PKB plus log number of moles of salt over number of moles of base. So what becomes POH? What's our PKB we've gotten? Is not five, it's not 4.58, but rather 9.42. You can see I've converted plus uh, number of moles of salt, uh, which is um 1 times 10 to the minus 3 over, sorry, that's for the base. Okay, this is the number of moles of the salt. So here become 3 times 10 to the minus 3 over 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So what are we having? Let's do this first of all. So 3 times 10 to the minus 3 over uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So we are having 3. Okay, so POH will not be because of 4.92 plus log 3. Okay, because here is already 3. So log 3, that's... Um, 0 0.48 so poh here will not be equal to um 4.92 plus 0 0.48 what becomes poh or uh, poh now 4.92 plus 0 0.48 that is 9.9 .9 now but the question is asking for solving ph not poh remember our formula uh, we said initially that ph plus poh is equal to 14 so ph will not be equal to uh, 14 minus POH. So pH now because of 14 minus. What's our POH value? Our POH value here is 9.9. .9. So uh, 14 minus 9.9, .9, we are having 4.1 to be the value for the pH. So you can see how questions like this are being tackled without stress. Now, if you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button and also share these videos with your friends. Thanks for watching.